All right, and we're back with Kathy and Felipe is joining us, and we're here in the water now. So Kathy, what are we looking at now? Well, I'd like to show you that in this wetland we have like two major groups of plants based on how they grow. Okay, these plants here are coming up out of the water and we call those emergent aquatic vegetation. And then we're also going to look at the other plants that grow just under the water surface and we call these submersed aquatic vegetation. So pretty easy names yeah. are SAV. So here's an example of what those plants would look like. So how do these plants take the phosphorus from the water? Well, what, how they take it from the water is essentially they're just using the phosphorus to grow. Oh. So the plants grow and as they grow they develop leaves and root structures and things like that and then as they die though that material is going to be put down onto the soil and then it's going to form a soil layer. And that's really how we're going to hold the phosphorus in the system. So these types of plants were starting to show up in the Everglades then with the phosphorus water being right. raised? Right. In fact, this right here, uh, does anybody know the name of this plant? This is cattail. Okay, this is a plant that grows really pretty fast and it does like a lot of nutrients. And this was a plant that was replacing the plants that had been in the Everglades. So are there ways to try and maximize the efficiency of the growth in the wetlands? There sure is. In fact, we really want to make sure that we're able to catch all the phosphorus that's coming into the system. So in fact, we do. We, we consciously try to allow certain plants to grow in certain places. So at the beginning of your wetland where the phosphorus levels are pretty high, we like to have the emergent vegetation coming in. And then as we move through the system, we're sitting in a wetland that's almost towards the end of the wetland where we want to have a mixture the plants. Now the cattails here to provide more protection for the plants that are here. And down here at the end of our wetland we want to have more of this submersed aquatic vegetation growing because it kind of like can take the phosphorus levels even lower. So we call right. this like our polishing cell. So that's a good point and in fact we normally let mother nature bring in the plants that we want mm -hmm. but sometimes we have to help it a little bit. So sometimes <laughs> we might have an area where nothing's growing for one reason or another. So we do have some planting activities where we might want to start our own plants growing in a certain spot. So would you like to help me and plant some SAV and get some SAV established? That sounds sure. great. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Let's go. Okay, great. Thanks. What's the first step in planting? Okay, the first uh, step in planting is we're going to find a location in which we don't have any SAV or partial non-SAV. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up this enclosure. What this uh, is going to help us do is um, keep the vegetation in place and prevent it from flowing or uh, going or spreading around, actually. We're going to try to target the vegetation to remain in this area. So the first thing we do is going to set up this enclosure. Okay. So I'm going to need one of you guys to give me a hand. So, so we're gonna go ahead and unroll it, and we're gonna grab that in. Yep, we got that in. Yep. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that it's nice and spread out, and we're gonna go ahead and bury it to the ground. So press down as hard as you can into the sediment. I'll give you a hand with that. Wanna help? <laughs> well, sometimes you got to muscle this thing. <laughs> so what's the next step? Okay, the next step is for us to get some SAV and we're going to put it inside the enclosure. So we have Kathy bringing some of the SAV that we have collected <laughs> and we're going to place it inside the uh, enclosure. This species is known as Nias, it's Nias guadalupensis. It's one of our desired species. We prefer to have this species because it's easily sustainable. It's, um, it grows faster and it produces very good results. So what we do is we're going to go ahead and spread it out in the enclosure and the vegetation is going to do its own thing. It's going to find its way out of these little holes and eventually it's going to start growing outside the uh, enclosure and continue to expand. How long does this enclosure stay out? Well, we can normally keep enclosures for a few months. It depends pretty much on the vegetation. We come here regularly and monitor uh, the, uh, the uh, vegetation expansion. So depending on how successful the vegetation is growing, we'll determine or decide whether we want to remove this enclosure and we don't need it in place anymore. So when we were on the boat, I noticed some really pretty flowers back there. What are oh, they? Oh, the ones over there. Yeah. That actually is American lotus. It's a native plant. It's uh, native from this region. We don't really uh, focus so much on that plant, 
but they grow naturally in the environment and since they don't cause any problems to us and provide habitat for other species we allow them to grow here and they are very beautiful so can we get a look at the sediment that we're all stepping absolutely. on absolutely let's get some soil cores first what we do is we're going to go ahead and introduce the soil core and device and we're going to drive it into the sediment would you mind holding this for no me? No problem. Okay. Now, once we get up to about a certain depth, we will, normally you use the knives when we're, when we're actually in vegetation with a lot of roots. And what it does is actually cuts the vegetation around and prevents the soil from compacting. Hold this knife for me. And then we'll drive the core in. Just in, just getting wet. And then we put this cap, and what this cap does is provides, provides a little bit of suction. Then we pull the soil core. Oh, wow. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the soil core from this scoring device. Okay. So if you follow me this way. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go ahead and remove the soil core out of this. Will you mind giving me a hand? Sure. Just please, um, just make sure that it's steady and you'll put your feet on the uh, wood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place the core device in here. Removing the cap allows the pressure to go to release. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have start pushing down. This might get a little messy. <laughs> so you make sure that you keep it straight, mm -hmm. nice and straight. And we're going to start removing the <laughs> core. Uh. Now right when we get there, what I am going to do so I'm gonna grab one of these. You mind holding the whole entire thing? Sure. All right. <laughs> and we're gonna capture the sediment right into this clear butyrate tube. So we're gonna continue doing the same thing that we were doing. Oh, wow. wow. And the sediment core is captured right in it. Neat. Now we can put the cap on. And this is to create a little bit more pressure in there so when I lift this up, it doesn't come down uh -huh. from the bottom. Like magic. It, uh, <laughs> sort of. It allows me to put the cap on the bottom. And then once I do that, I remove this cap. Now, by looking at this, we can see the different soil profiles. You can see the different colors. And you can see that this portion right here at the top which is like a marl or decomposing material, is no, what we normally call the flock or the flocculent material. This is a highly resuspensible uh, material. And this is what is eventually gonna become the new sediment or the new soil. All right, so is it ready to go to the lab now? Yes, we're gonna go ahead and pack the sediments and we're gonna go ahead and ship it and it goes straight to the lab. Great. What do snails, birds, and alligators have in common? Find out next.